In the previous video, we started looking at the k-means algorithm for clustering. And we had this, we started with this intuition that we wanted to assign points to a cluster, that to, a, to a center, you know, that, that each cluster has a center and the points in that cluster are nearer to that center, but you have to choose the centers. And so we, we started, so we, we wrote down this sort of objective function that we wanted to minimize. And then we said, okay, so k-means, in k-means, we're going to alternately choose the optimal A for a fixed mu, the optimal assignments for fixed centers, and then for fixed assignments, we'll choose the optimal centers. Starting from some initialized, say, randomly chosen centers. And in step A, we found that the, the optimal assignments are just the nearest, choose the center that's the nearest to that point. And now we need to choose the optimal centers for given assignments. So we want to minimize optimal in the sense that it minimizes this objective function. So let's write down this objective function and let's try to minimize it for fixed, for fixed A, let's minimize it with respect to mu, each of the mu's. So let's write this down here. We have, let's rewrite it first. L is the sum, the sum as I goes from I guess I did j first, j from 1 to k, i from 1 to n, a i j, distance from x i to mu j squared. And this, uh, this squared Euclidean distance, we can also write as, well, let's actually, yeah, so let me just say that first, I guess. This squared Euclidean distance is dot product of xi minus mu j with xi minus mu j, of course. And now we want to, so we do the standard calculus thing, set the gradient of L, and this is the gradient with respect to mu j for some, for, for, you know, pick one j, and we're going to, we're going to try to minimize L with respect to one of these mu's. So in fact, you know, this, this sort of decouples into the the sum of these j things and they're sort of in there well they are they're independent because each of these the terms in this this sum only depends on mu j so it decouples and let's minimize it with respect to one of these so let's take the gradient so we have the sum we may as well s just put uh, sum over i and j well let, no, let's keep them separate sum over i sum over j a i j i'm moving the gradient inside the gradient of this thing, xi minus mu j. Oh, and actually, so right, we can first, if we're taking the gradient, uh, I should have made this like j prime or something here. j prime, j prime, xi minus mu j prime. But the gradient of mu j prime, whenever j prime is not equal to j, is just, is just, is just zero, you know, and xi doesn't depend on mu j. So this is just zero unless j prime equals j. So we may as well just leave these as as j, and we can get rid of this sum. Xi minus mu j. So we just we're just left with the one term here. And let's let's take a closer look at this this expression here. So let's expand it out. We have the gradient of xi transpose xi minus mu j minus two times mu j transpose xi plus xi, or plus rather mu j transpose mu j. And if we move the gradient through, this part doesn't depend on mu j at all, so this is zero. This, using just little bit of vector calculus stuff you can this is minus 2 xi you can write out what the definition of the gradient and verify that if you want and this is 2 mu j you can check those if you if you wish if you aren't familiar with those those little rules for vector calculus and so we can plug that in above here 
And what do we get? Well, let, so let's say, I'll just put it down here. Should I put it down here? I'll just put it up here, I guess. So if we plug those in, we get the sum over i, a i j minus two x i plus two mu j. And now continuing this line down here, so that was an aside. Now this, this equals, what is it? Minus two sum of a i j over i plus two. Now this doesn't depend on i, so we just get, oh, sorry, there should be an x i in there. a i j x i plus two. This doesn't depend on i, so now we get mu j sum of the a i j's over i. And let's give this, well, okay, so let's, we'll, we'll come back to that in a sec. So now, so we set this equal to zero and we want to solve, so that gives us the twos cancel, move this one over, divide by this, and we get mu j equals sum over i a i j x i divided by sum over i a i j. And let's check that this is, so this is a critical point, it's a unique critical point, and let's just check that it's a, that it's a, um, well, let's see, we want it to be a minimum, so let's just check that it's a minimum. So we, if we took the second derivative, if we took a derivative with respect to, you know, say, mu, I don't know, mu j k, the kth component of j, then what do we get? So the second, so it's the, derivative of the gradient. So we want we want to get the Hessian. In order to verify that this is in fact a minimum, we want to get the Hessian. So we have to take the matrix of second derivatives. And so we differentiate this and what do we get? Well this is zero. So right, the derivative you know moves through here. This is zero. And this is just equal to this is a constant. So we get two times that constant. times if if k equals so so it's going to be zero for the component so this is a vector we're differentiating this vector and it's going to be to be zero for the elements where it's not equal to k the, the, the elements that are not k and it's going to be one for the elements that are k so this is going to be e k this is the you know if e1 is one zero the standard basis e2 is 0 1 0 0 etc and so the second the matrix of second derivatives the hessian is this thing 2 times the sum of these guys times the identity matrix and as long as one of these as long as there is at least so as long as this is this is non zero then this is positive definite and therefore it's a minimum so is is it always true that at least one of these is uh, so th these aijs are always zero or one so we need at least one of them to be a one and what does that mean what is this aij well so let's think about what this aij means sum of the aijs what's aij there it is aij is one if xi is assigned to j so for summing over i summing aij over i, then that's get, that gives us the number of points that are assigned to j. So let's write that down. So let's call it, let's call it nj. nj, sum as i goes from 1 to n, aij, equals the number of points i such that xi, a number of i such that xi is assigned to the center j. So this is going to be positive definite as long as there's at least one, one point assigned 
to that center. So let's assume that there is for now. Let's assume, so this is assuming nj strictly positive. So by the way, this notation for a matrix, uh, the positive, you know, greater than zero uh, notation means that something's positive definite. And you put greater or equal to mean it's positive semi-definite for a matrix. And now, so what is this formula saying? So now we have this, this formula here is saying to minimize L for mu j, the mu j, the, the choice of mu j that you should choose is this one over nj, one over nj times this sum. And what is this sum? This is the sum over all the elements. This is the sum over all the, the points xi such that xi is assigned to j. So let's just write, it out, write out that. Sum over all i such that xi is assigned to j of xi. And this this formula here has a very natural interpretation. So this so this is going to be our formula. This is going to be our update for the B step in the algorithm. So we'll choose the new mu j for each j to be just the empirical mean. This is just the empirical mean of the points that are assigned to j. And so Technically speaking, this is not defined when nj is zero, but uh, it you know that that happens so rarely. In fact, I don't I've never whenever I've used k-means that's never happened to me. It happens so rarely that I, I don't I don't know if there's a standard approach to resolving that. But one thing you could do would be to just restart the algorithm from the beginning with a new random initialization. Or another thing you could do, which would, you know, if nj was, was zero, another thing you could do would be to just, so that would mean that there was, you know, some center j for which no points were assigned to it. So another thing you could do would just be to randomly set that mean to one of the other, one of the points in the data set. And then that point would be guaranteed to at least uh, be assigned to that on the next go around. So that's a couple of ways. So this is so this is the k-means algorithm. So you start out, so you you're iterating between a and b, and in step a, you're choosing these assignments, assign each point to the nearest mean, and in step b, in step b, you're updating each mean to just be updating each center to be the empirical mean of the points assigned to it. So that's that's k-means. And uh, k-means, it's, it's not guaranteed to converge to the global minimum of this function. In fact, I think that this finding the global minimum is, is actually an NP-hard problem. And so this simple iterative scheme is not guaranteed to give you the global minimum, but it oftentimes it works quite well, and it's, it's reasonably, it's usually pretty fast. So that makes k-means a, a pretty fairly popular method. And next, or a little in the, in the near future, we're going to look at an alternative to k-means, k -means, a pro more sort of probabilistic approach to clustering using a Gaussian mixture model. And we'll use EM, the expectation, mal uh, expectation maximization algorithm, to, to find a good, a good choice of Gaussian mixture model for clustering the data.